Welcome, my name is Cindy and I blog over at DIYBeautify.com where I love sharing inexpensive projects and crafts to beautify your home. And today we're going a little vintage. I'm going to show you how to make some vintage clothespins, just like this. We're going to add some numbers to them. And I actually display this in my laundry room. Just adds a little bit of charm on the shelf. I love seeing the clothespins in that creamy white um, antique ironstone creamer, but I'm going to give you some other tips for displaying them when we're finished here. So without further ado, if you're new to my channel, please click the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my projects. And let's get started. Let me just walk you through the supplies you'll need for this project. You're going to need to pick up some of the doll head clothespins. Um, I got these from a store in Memphis called Pop Shelf, but I'm pretty sure Amazon carries them. You're going to need some dark furniture wax, or alternately you could use stain. Um, you could even use writ dye in brown. I like to use some disposable gloves when I'm doing stuff with wax. You're going to need a paper towel, a tiny craft brush, and then some rub-ons. Um, these are a little harder to find than they used to be, and I used to be a huge scrapbooker, so I have a lot of these in my stash already. The rub-ons will come with a little craft stick or a plastic stick to, to literally buff, burnish them onto your project. So just a word about these rub-ons. Like I said, I used to be a scrapbooker, so I have a lot of supplies that I've just hung on to over the years and I'm slowly using them up. Um, these used to be really popular at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, but they're harder to find nowadays. And I will search Amazon and if I find some on Amazon, I'll link them in the description below. But some other tips, if you're just unable to find the rub-ons, um, something else you can use. There are actually, I've thought of two other ideas. You could use some rubber stamps or you could use um, stencils. So stencils and stamps are everywhere. You know, you want something that's smaller so that it's going to fit on the clothespin. So I'd recommend um, nothing over half an inch tall and that's maybe about a quarter of an inch wide. Okay, so don't worry if you're thinking, oh, I love that project, but I don't know where to find these rub-ons. Consider those other ideas and I'll source some for you, some stencils and some stamps again and include them in the description below. So let's get started. So the first way to add some vintage style to these raw wood clothespins is to either stain them or I like to use dark furniture paste wax. It's just faster, it's not quite as smelly, it dries much, much, much quicker. And if you don't have either of these, you could use just brown craft paint that you would brush on, but then have a damp paper towel handy and wipe it off, and it'll give you the look of a stain as well. So I'm just going to go in here with a little bit of, I'm trying to decide if I want to use my brush. All right, I think I'll try it with my brush. I know that when I've made these in the past, getting into that little groove can be difficult with a paper towel. So maybe I'll address that area first. You just rub a little brush, I'm sorry, a little wax on your brush and just drag it across, okay? This wax does have a little bit of a smell, but it's not, it's not as bad as stain. I find stain to be worse, for sure. If you're sensitive to smells, you can always just have a fan blowing uh, the smell away. Okay, so now that I've got that little intersection done, I'm going to use a paper towel to quickly do the rest. And I like to have a work surface that is easy to wipe up. That's what this mat is. So I'm going to add a little bit of stain, or sorry, 
it's not stain, it looks like stain, wax onto a paper towel. You'll see that this just goes super fast. And if you like a darker look, you can add a second coat once this dries, just like you would with, with regular stain. All right, flip it around and let's do the little ball head. Now I'm gonna set this aside and then we'll buff it when I've finished all six. And buffing will just remove any excess wax that we have and it'll help give like a little sheen to the piece, which I think really adds to the vintage charm of these little clothespins. I have seen these selling actually places like Etsy and um, Mercari. So I know that a lot of people like them and I thought it would just be fun to come in here and show you how easy they are really to make. If you're a crafter, you probably already have a lot of supplies at home. You might already have wax and the rub-ons. If not, these supplies are not that expensive. I use wax for when I'm um, painting and distressing furniture and other home decor crafts. So for me, it's worth the cost. I think I paid, bought this online, um, I think I paid about $22, but it has lasted me, honestly, for years. Okay. This one I went a little bit heavier. I can just feel it on my gloves. Okay, so we're gonna finish up with um, adding wax to these clothespins. Okay, so all the clothespins have been stained with our dark wax, and now I'm just gonna take some more paper towel, I'm gonna grab a clothespin, and I'm just rubbing. I'm working the wax into the wood. I'm removing any excess wax. You will notice that it lightens a little bit, but um, it still has that that vintage feel to it. So let's just buff all of our clothespins. If you have a light hand and didn't add a whole lot of wax, you might no not notice too much of a difference. I noticed towards the end I started to get a little heavy hand handed so you can see it is taking off um, wax on my paper towel. One more. All right, there we go. Let me just move this dirty stuff aside. And I think I can take my gloves off now. So let's move on to the numbered part of this, the rub-ons. Um, I've used these ones quite a bit, but I did notice that I do have one single one left. So I'm just gonna pull that well, can I pull that paper out? There we go. And I'm just gonna, you will note it, rub-ons come with a waxy sort of backing and you wanna keep that on them until you rub because if you don't, the top part, the back of it is the actual 
I don't know if it's ink or what it is, but if you scratch that with your finger, you can actually remove it. And obviously we don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna cut out, this is sort of the process that I use. Cut out, and just line them up. There's the one, the two. got all my numbers lined up. I'm just going to grab a craft stick that comes with the rub-ons and then you're just going to add it to the clothespin. It's really, really simple. You don't want to go down too low because these are going to be tucked down into something so that they stand up. So about at the top inch, maybe a half inch down, you just hold it in place. Now I've removed the backing, right? This is the backing from my number. I've removed it and you're putting the dark side against your wood. So obviously, so your number or your letter is in the right position. And then you're just rubbing it and it's transferring onto the wood. And you can, oops, you can see that the paper will go cloudy when it's been transferred. And there it is. I think I lost the tip of my one. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna just add that back. Somehow, it was left on the paper but that's what's so cool about these rub-ons is they're easy to manipulate. You know that? That piece just doesn't want to come off. Hmm. Interesting. It could be that these are just, these ones are just old. <laughs> Try it again. Honestly, you can just use your nail. It's, it's just as easy as the a little stick. Well, okay, I got a little bit of that portion. Okay, well, vintage things are not perfect, and so I'm not too worried about a project that is not perfect either. So again, take the backing off your number, attach your rub-on to the clothespin. I just lost that little guy. You can see that you can, you know, you can see the orientation um, and then you're just going to rub it. I'm just going to make sure it's centered between the side pieces and just I'm going to rub it with my thumb nail while I'm holding it in place. And you will see it goes cloudy when it's been transferred. So then you're free to just lift that piece off. And there it is. One and two. Cute, right? Now, like I said, if you find rub-ons that are different, unique, I have this, this book of rub-ons that has crowns. It has... Um, some of the pieces are way too big for these clothespins. It has little clocks, hearts. I thought I saw some fleur-de-lis. There's some little clocks. So you don't have to do numbers like I'm doing. Um, you can use you know, whatever you want, whatever you find. 
to make it unique for you and fit your style and your decor. Whoop. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and finish adding these numbers and then I'm going to give you a couple more additional ideas for how to style these. So if you have a actual clothesline in your yard, these would be so cute to use outside. For this um, display, I have just used a little creamer that I found at Goodwill and I filled it up with rice. You could also use quinoa or maybe dried beans. And then it's just super simple to just tuck the little clothespins and have them stand up. So another idea is a little um, terracotta pot. I painted this one white and I've hot glued a styrofoam ball inside. You can see that I've used this for a lot of stuff, but the styrofoam will hold these in place as well. It's maybe a little harder than with the rice. Okay, and once you're done adding them, you could take a little piece of moss, a little bit of moss, or Spanish moss or whatever and just tuck that in there to hide where it is meeting the star foam. I hope you've loved this sweet little vintage idea for your home. This is such an inexpensive craft and like I showed you, it can just be done in minutes. So let me know if uh, you have any questions and check out the description below. I'm going to include the supplies that I used. Thanks and have a great day.